Good morning. All right. Beautiful day outside. Got the sunroof open. I didn't realize my last video that no one watches. That's disgusting. Water damage. Beautiful. Maybe you'll see a bird or two on these videos. These are going to be fun. I only really have time to make these things, driving to and from work and things like that. Um, personal life is pretty crazy. Don't really have time to make videos in my basement. <laughs> my basement, not my mom's. Come on, 37. Yes, I'm in the crypto. I'd say I'm probably I'm about the average age. Maybe, maybe even a little bit old. But yeah, I'd say about I'm, I'm about the average age to be in the crypto. Um, so what did I want to talk about today? Uh, huge opportunity. The Bitcoin, the Bitcoin gods have presented us a massive opportunity. And that opportunity is... Um, what is this guy all mad about? The opportunity is that the fact that Bitcoin is now under... Not 60,000, not 55,000. Bitcoin is currently under 50,000. It was just 63,000, I don't know, five days ago. And people want to stack those sats. Well, guess what? Now is one of the best times to stack even more sats. Um, we gotta understand that right now is the time to do it. You gotta do it, okay? We've got to do it. If you want to be a 0.1 Bitcoin holder, a whole Bitcoiner, whatever your goal is, right now is the time to do it. You can't take your foot off the gas. Bitcoin dropped, I think it was about, from its high, I don't know. Let's say Bitcoin dropped 18%. Your fiat is going to get you 18% more Satoshi. So now is the time to do it. Could it go lower? Sure. Uh, so right now you have an amazing opportunity in the greatest money that has ever existed and may ever exist um, for the next 50 years for sure it's the greatest money that's that that will exist and um, so what I wanted to talk a little bit about is this stock to flow models I've talked in my first video I talked about plan B stock to flow models and now there's just the, the typical uh, stock to flow model with Bitcoin and um, without comparing it to cross-asset cross asset models. Um, all right, I paused my video because I'm getting some coffee, but it's taking forever. And I don't feel like doing nothing, so I don't want to have any downtime. You're gonna hear me order some coffee. Hey, maybe it'll be entertaining. Um, so what I, what I want to talk about is um, something that uh, plan B safety and that some other people um, mentioned today on Twitter and that is the fact that um, Bitcoin has traced and tracked that stock to flow model um, like something that has never been done before basically if you take the stock to flow model and the Bitcoin price they are matching up almost perfectly and it's called like a band a standard deviation band and here's my coffee Welcome to Panera. Today you can support Cleveland Clinic Tokens when you purchase one of our delicious puzzle piece cookies. Uh, can I have a large iced coffee with two creams? Um, and I'll take a puzzle piece cookie. Okay. Anything else? I'm part of the coffee club. Uh, what's the phone number? 440 552. One seven six one. Okay. That's it. Already got to wrap your phone. All right. Thank you. I'm gonna have to cut out that number. I told everyone my cell phone number because I'm part of this coffee club. All right. Uh, I gotta remember to do that before I upload this video because I don't want people knowing my phone number. That'd be a big snafu. All right. Um, so the back to that stock to flow. So there's a um, maybe I'll make a link to the to the charts. So if you compare the stock to flow of Bitcoin and the current price, 
there is a projected stock to flow model. And every time it doesn't have any, you know, it goes like this, levels off, and then it goes up. Well, the Bitcoin price has stayed within a band of one standard deviation of that predicted Bitcoin price. It stayed within that band every single day for as long as it has existed. Meaning the stock to flow model has perfectly predicted what the price of Bitcoin is going to be. Wild. That's just wild. And it stayed within that standard deviation band every single day of its existence. For it to do that every single day in its existence has the st statistical probability of basically zero. So the random chance of it staying within that band of the stock to flow predicted price of Bitcoin is basically zero. It was like, I don't know, 10 to the X of negative 477. It was something that was virtually had a 0% chance of randomly happening. So what does that mean? If it has a 0% chance of randomly happening, then it's a 100% chance happening because of the asset itself. Basically what that means is Bitcoin, because it's the best money, is following the stock to flow model perfectly. Therefore, so far, you can rely on this stock to flow model and you're never gonna be wrong. It's never gonna be wrong. It's still a big if in my mind, if that's the way you wanna think about it. So what can we, why is this useful knowledge? Well, in August of 2021, this certain stock to flow model is predicting we are going to have a hundred thousand dollar Bitcoin. Well, what is it right now? What did I just say? We're not below 60, we're below 50. We're at $49,000 Bitcoin. Well, if Bitcoin's going to be $100,000 Bitcoin in August of 2021, and right now, as of April 23rd, we have $49,000 Bitcoin. Well, I think 2Xing an investment in it, May, June, July, 2x in investment in four months is a pretty good deal. I think that's pretty good. Um, so you wanted the opportunity. You're asking for the opportunity. You're not sure how to get into Bitcoin. When is the right time? Well, right now is a perfect time because we know if you trust the stock to flow model, we know for pretty much certainty, 100% I'm not gonna say it's 100%, but 100% probable that Bitcoin is going to be $100,000 in August of 2021. Right now it's 49,000. You wanted confidence, you want conviction, uh, buy it. I mean, where else can you double your, your um, investment in four months? That's practically I don't want to use these words, but I'm going to use it, okay? And this is not financial advice. It's practically guaranteed to go to $100,000 Bitcoin. It has followed the stock to flow model like a T. It's never broken the one standard deviation band. And if it doesn't break the one standard deviation band, which it never has broken, then we're going to see a range of, in August of 2021, I don't know, 85 to $115,000 um, Bitcoin. And also, when Bitcoin does seem to, uh, within that band, Bitcoin is typically to the upside of that band. So it's not perfectly on the exact line, but it is, it's either above the line or below the line. It does hit the line every now and then. Um, but where is it usually? It's usually above that line. It's going to the upside. So that band of, let's say, let's call 85 to 115 in August of 2021, um, it's gonna be closer to that 115 because it's usually on the upside. So what I'm saying is you can double your investment in Bitcoin in dollar terms 
and it's practically guaranteed. Where else can you find a better investment than this? You probably can't. And it might sound like I'm talking out of the side of my mouth, but I didn't, I didn't make up the model. The model isn't lying. This, the stock to flow model isn't, uh, it's, it's never been wrong. It's only a prediction model. It doesn't promise to always follow it, but it has, and, and it continues to do so. Um, I don't really like modeling all that much, but when something is 100% accurate, if someone were to predict a, a sports better, if someone were to predict there was 100 games and they never got it wrong, not once, would you trust them for the 101st bet? I think people would. I think people would take their advice and bet money on the next game that they predict is the team is going to win or lose. So that's pretty much what Bitcoin is doing right now. There's been not just 100, there's been eight years every single day. It's stayed within that band and it's been correct. It's been accurate. It's never been wrong. So that day in August 2021 where it's saying it's going to be a $100,000 Bitcoin, guess what? It's never been wrong and may not be wrong. So let's have some conviction and get that Bitcoin. I'll see you later. All right, it's later. Sorry about that. Um, I thought that was going to be the end of the video, but I still feel like talking. Um, I had to get my coffee there. <laughs> I'm going to have to, uh, if you don't, if you've never made videos on YouTube before, I want to splice out that um, phone number that I, I used. And uh, if you've never used a YouTube before, there's a really easy to use app called um, Video Shop. And you can easily cut out little segments and uh, reduce the size and things like that. So if you're a YouTuber, if you're a new YouTuber and you have like 10 viewers like I do, it's amazing. Um, video Shop is free and you can just kind of make your own uh, videos and it's just an easy to use um, app to for your iPhone. It's probably on Android, but it's I know that it's on iPhone. All right, uh, do I have anything else to talk about Bitcoin? I mean, this is the best opportunity you're gonna see uh, in a while, in my opinion. Um, okay, you can think of it as this. Are there gonna be bigger corrections like this in the future? There might be. You know, there's gonna be 20, 30% pullbacks on our way to a million dollars a coin. Yep, I said it, a million dollars a Bitcoin. Um, so right now it just dropped 18%. Can it drop more? Yeah, sure, it might drop more. It's probably not gonna go outside of that band, like I said. Um, and if you if you look at the chart I'm going to try to upload with that band, I think the band says something like, uh, let's call it uh, 50,000. So again, it's never dropped below that band of stock to flow. And it's saying that we're not going to drop below. I don't know if it's totally accurate, but let's call it 50,000. It's definitely not going to drop below that 50,000. So we have a downside to 50,000. And the model predicts that we have an upside to a million dollars a coin. 50,000? Little fear. Million dollars? Elation. Which one are you going to choose? You have 9,000 to the downside. Ugh, I keep on missing these lights. You have 9,000 to the downside. And you have $950,000 to the upside. Hmm. Uh, $9,000 down or $950,000 to the upside based on the prediction of stock to flow in the year. Now that one is the year 2024. And 2024, which could be wrong it might be 2027 let's call it 2024 in 2024 the prediction model is calling for a million dollars a coin if we get 0.1 bitcoin which is still attainable achievable to many bitcoiners and crypto people if you get 0.1 bitcoin if that happens you're you get a hundred thousand in bitcoin that's no that's not 
That's no nothing. That's sort of life-changing. That could, you know, put a massive dent in your mortgage and you could be on your way to more financial freedom. So if you don't have a Bitcoin, don't say, uh, it's over, it's so expensive. Look at, the, look at the projection of how much it's gonna grow and just try to accumulate as much as you can and stack those sets. I would, the easiest thing to do for me was to think of a number that I wanted, how much Bitcoin, and just do on the daily, the weekly, and the yearly, just do everything you can to crew that Bitcoin. There is Bitcoin back debit cards, soon to be Bitcoin back credit cards. There's different apps that give you free Bitcoin. Very small, I know. You can um, dollar cost average with $20 a week, $50 a week. You can ape in. What does aging in mean? That means, again, not financial advice, but that means, huh, maybe I want to take 10% uh, of my stocks and put it into Bitcoin. Try to get that 0.1 or 1 or 10, I'll never get 10, uh, Bitcoin. And it would be a lot easier if they proved one of those ETFs a lot of people could a bend Bitcoin. I mean, I would. None of my, none of my um, money that I have in stocks and bonds are in. Uh, well, indirectly, there some of them are into Bitcoin, like um, Tesla, PayPal, and Square that do hold Bitcoin. But that's pretty indirect. You're not getting much real Bitcoin that way. The company itself can explode, but you're not getting any true real Bitcoin that way um, it's probably still the best investment game in town is to try to find companies that are crypto friendly or have unbelievable so I'm making this video throwing down some Bitcoin knowledge I have no idea where the video stops no idea where it cut off because I'm in my car I live in Ohio and although it's a beautiful day outside 46 degrees outside, so I had the heat on. And where do I have my phone recording this video? Right in front of the clip. It's on a clip in front of the heater. So what happened? My phone started overheating. And it stopped, and it, uh, the internal battery shut itself down. Unbelievable. So I have no idea where I left off. I was throwing down some incredible Bitcoin knowledge. Probably the one of the greatest things I've ever said now it's lost. It's lost in the ether. Never to be, uh, never to be found. All right, well, basically, where I left off, well, I have no idea where I left off, but what I was talking about when I realized my phone was dead uh, was the Bitcoin ETF. Uh, and I was talking about aping into Bitcoin. If uh, I wanted to ape into Bitcoin, but you, know, you can't really ape into Bitcoin in the stocks, stock market so far because all you really got is certain companies that have Bitcoin on their balance sheet. It's not true Bitcoin to you, the stockholder, but at least the company can explode. Let's explode so you have some indirect exposure that way. What you really want is direct exposure. And there's grayscale and that's pseudo direct exposure. You can pay that premium you have to have it locked up for six months. But once that Bitcoin ETF is released, um, the Winklevoss twins were trying to release that thing, I think maybe four years ago. And for whatever reason, America's scared or something. The SEC is scared to release that Bitcoin ETF. Um, why? I don't know. Does it undermine? Uh, 
approve that Bitcoin ETF. But let's say a Bitcoin ETF does get approved. And I was talking about how we know that there is a good prediction that Bitcoin is going to be a million dollars in August of 2024. So how can you get yourself in a position where you get more Bitcoin? I talked about stacking stats, dollar cost averaging. Um, and then I was talking about trying to ape into Bitcoin. An easy way to ape into Bitcoin would be um, through your stocks. Lots of people, you know, over the age of 30, 40, 50 have plenty of capital built up in their 401ks or what have you in their IRAs. And if they're Bitcoin lovers, they would love to ape in to Bitcoin. Throw 5%, 10%, 50% into um, something that has a Bitcoin. But right now, for the majority of Americans, and I'm assuming the majority of the globe, I know Canada came out with a Bitcoin ETF, but the majority of the globe currently cannot get a Bitcoin ETF, an exchange, an exchange traded fund. Um, is an ETF perfect Bitcoin? No. It is, is it a solution for lots of people? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Because people don't want to hold their private keys and learn the Bitcoin technology and they would rather just have their own personal brokerage account or their own personal financial advisor say, hey, give me some of that Bitcoin. How much you want to put in there? Oh, 10%. And either they could go click, 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 take 10% of my portfolio, buy this Bitcoin ATF, bang, bang, boom, they're done. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. And I can see a lot of people doing that with a Bitcoin ETF. So that is, once that Bitcoin ETF is approved and on the market for anybody and everybody to buy, um, certain brokerage accounts I'm sure are gonna get them first, then I can see people totally aping in to Bitcoin. And it doesn't have to be a huge stake of their portfolio. If they're a rich person and they get and they have 10 million in their account and all they want to do is put a measly 5% into um, Bitcoin, well, that's $500,000, bing, bang, boom, into a Bitcoin ETF. And, you know, what happens when someone puts $500,000 in into a Bitcoin ETF? Well, the Bitcoin price rises. What happens to them? thousand people do that it rises what happens when a hundred thousand people do that it really rises what happens when let's call it 50 million Americans put five percent of their portfolio into a Bitcoin ETF well it moves the Bitcoin price goes to the moon let me tell you something there's lots of money in the stock market and practically none of it, practically none of it is in Bitcoin currently. Of the totality of all the money in the stock market, um, I would say less than 1%. Yeah, what am I even thinking about? Of less than 1% is somehow reflected in Bitcoin. Um, and so when people like Michael Saylor say, Bitcoin is going to eat gold, Bitcoin is going, oh yeah, gold. If people, gold isn't moving, it's tired, it's over with. I was a gold believer, I still don't technically hate gold. I think it has its place as analog to Bitcoin, but you know, Bitcoin, or gold really isn't moving that much lately. Um, it hasn't for a long time, it's boring, it's old. It's difficult to understand, the mining process is, is worse than Bitcoin's mining process. And so you can see a lot of people say, I'm just going to drop that gold. I'll drop half my gold. I'll go half gold, half Bitcoin for my store of value, for my uh, vision of, of sound money in my um, stock portfolio. So I can see a lot of people switching 1%, 5%, 10%, 20%, 50% .50 into a Bitcoin ETF. <laughs> Currently, right now, I'd say in totality, there's less than 1% of the stock market money in Bitcoin. Once that Bitcoin ETF is approved, 
I can certainly see a flood of capital into into Bitcoin. Now, an ETF is indirect. You do have to trust the custodian. You do have to trust that they have the actual Bitcoin. So if you have 50,000, right now, if you have 50,000 in a Bitcoin ETF, uh, they can't promise that they have all of that 50,000 reflected in pure Bitcoin, but it's audited. They'll have, you'll have trusted custodians. So you're not perfectly guaranteed to have the one-to-one -one ratio of in Bitcoin. They do take their fees. They do take their their spreads. Um, but, you know, it's going to be higher than half. You know, probably be something like, I don't know, 90% of the, the money you put towards a Bitcoin ETF is reflected in real, actual, um, properly custodian, I don't know if that's a word, custodian uh, Bitcoin. So back to my original explanation of what to do if you want to get exposure to Bitcoin. You could do the dollar cost average, you could do the apps, there's debit cards, there's credit cards that are gonna give you, give you interest they're going to give you um, rewards to try to accrue Bitcoin that way. But honestly, the easiest way is probably to ape into Bitcoin. Aping me, let's just go. Let's just go for it. Let's go nuts. Let's let's make it happen. So the easiest way for a lot of people to accomplish that would be simply when and if they may never approve that Bitcoin ETF. When and if that Bitcoin ETF is approved, people are simply going to throw some money at it, and that is certainly going to jack up the price. Uh, I should say, an ETF approval and things like that is not my field of expertise. It does introduce the possibility of, and there's already this possibility, but there's more ample opportunity and easier to access shorting Bitcoin. I don't know why you would do that, uh, but there's going to be yahoos out there that are going to short it. Maybe they think it's a little inflated. Maybe they think it's due for a correction. So you're going to have some people that are going to use the ETF world for, for shorting purposes. They're going to short, short Bitcoin. So in a way, I think what that might do is that might reduce the volatility. And for some reason, a lot of these stock... I don't know why they hate it so much. A lot of these stock managers, portfolio managers, they get really scared of the volatility. I think because maybe the people that they're managing money for, when they, when the clients themselves see something drop 20%, you know, they don't got those, they don't got those diamond hands like the Bitcoiners do. They got those paper hands. And so when they see that 20% drop, they're, they're screaming, sell, it's going to the bottom, it's going to zero. And the money managers have to be, have to be sitting there and be like, nah, 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 nah. no, we're not going to do that. We're going to hold on to this. We're going to hodl it. Um, so I think that's why uh, people shorting Bitcoin, in a way I've heard that that actually reduces the volatility which you can, I guess you can say because of that uh, scenario that I went through with the stock managers, stock, uh, yeah, stock managers having to tell their clients to uh, not be afraid of volatility, but they still are afraid of volatility if, if the Bitcoin ETFs and shorting Bitcoin reduces the volatility. So right now we had like an 18% drop in Bitcoin. If that volatility, volatility reduces over time, as Bitcoin increases the price, theoretically it should reduce in time because it's hard to have big volatility in a bigger asset. Um, that's a good thing because instead of 18% drops, a big deal in Bitcoin will be like 5% drop, uh, which happens like all the time in Bitcoin. But if you have reduced volatility, then it like plays to the mind of psych the psychological investor. If you have reduced volatility, People will feel more confident in the um, asset, and they won't think that they're getting screwed as much. Because take it from their take it from their view, uh, their viewpoint. 
if they decided to ape into Bitcoin and they put 10% um, of their money in Bitcoin and they get unlucky, um, sometimes when people put money into Bitcoin, it immediately shoots up and they feel like the smartest person in the world. But let's be honest, sometimes when people put money into Bitcoin and you get one of those hard corrections, those hard dips, well, that's going to scare a lot of people away. So if the Bitcoin ETF and the more the introduction of more shorting, again, I would never short, but if that can reduce the volatility, that's only going to grow people's confidence in the asset that much more. And, you know, the people with the weak hands, when they see those 18% dips, they're going to sell because they're going to get scared. So if the volatility gets reduced, then people are going to have stronger hands. People with more strong hands, more people that have Bitcoin, strong hands, plus Bitcoin exposure, plus more access is going to reduce, is going to result in what Bitcoin does best. And what Bitcoin does best is that it has NGU technology, very fancy technology. It has number go up. The number goes up. Bitcoin has number go up technology. Why does it have number go up technology again? Is it because it's some magical internet money? Uh, actually, yes. But the main reason that number go up technology and the reason that Doge does not have number go up technology. Yes, Dogecoin, Dogecoin, however you want to say it, Dogecoin. The reason Dogecoin does not have number go up technology and Bitcoin does have number go up technology amongst many other things is that Bitcoin is limited in its supply. Right now I believe there's 18 million coins that exist and there's only a possibility of 21 million coins that will ever exist. I bet a million coins have been lost so far so really there's only going to be 20 million coins that are accessible. Um, that's why the number goes up because as more money goes into it, as more value goes into it, the Bitcoin price has to go up because it's limited in supply. Now, Dogecoin, Doggycoin, nothing against the Dogecoin community, but did you know every day that there's massive amounts of Doge inflation, meaning it does not have a limited supply, meaning every day there's more Dogecoin and more Dogecoin and more Dogecoin every day, the supply goes up. I mean, what is this? The US dollar? Dogecoin is mimicking the inflation of the US dollar, which has lost 99% of its value over the past 30 years. Just made that up, maybe true. But Dogecoin is following the similar, following similar um, uh, inflation mechanism. So what do you think is gonna happen to Dogecoin after that incredible run? Good for them. I'm glad for the Dogecoin community. They have, they, they've had an incredible run. It's April 23rd. It just started correcting. Get out. Dogecoin, if you're into Dogecoin, anybody in the Dogecoin, get out. Get out, get out, get out. Get out now. You can easily Doge, you can easily transfer your Dogecoin into Bitcoin on hundreds of exchanges on many different wallets. They have the integration to transfer your Dogecoin into Bitcoin. And hey, I'm not a Dogecoin hater. I'm happy for the Dogecoin community to see that incredible run. Question, have I ever owned Dogecoin? Answer, yes. <laughs> yes, I have. Um, I was playing around with it about two, three, four years ago. Uh, it was fun. It's, uh, it's a nice little coin. Um, easy to transact with, low fees. Um, I liked it. it. It's a good, uh, I like to think of Dogecoin as a good conduit. If you want to get into another coin and you want low fees and you already have a lot of Dogecoin, then um, I see it kind of, kind of like a stable coin. Um, it's not going to be that stable um, with all the um, money that just flew into it. But it, I think there's actually a, a unique use case for Dogecoin. Um, and that would be like things like um, 
transacting into another into other coins now there's other altcoins that are trying to do that much better and that's their actual technology but we have to remember about dogecoin it was made as a joke the guy the guy that made it i forget his name but the guy that made it um he saw bitcoin he's like wow what an amazing idea that that thing's incredible eh, let me just uh whip whip my own coin up in a couple of days I heard it might have been hours. Some coder, you know, it's not some Yahoo pl plugged and played it into a website. But he was a coder and he decided, yeah, I'll switch some parameters around. And I'll create the, uh, I'll create Dogecoin. Could that have worked? I think it actually could have worked. Um, and it, technically it did work. I mean, look, it, it, just, it just exploded in price. Uh, I think the problem was is that he didn't limit the supply. He created there's inflation and too much if he if he kept it at like very small like maybe he just made like half a million coins a year ah, i could see that maybe have any use case but i think i'm pretty sure it's well maybe it is a half million coins a year but all i know is that uh, making having inflation built into the schedule probably was an error time will tell but having inflation built into the dogecoin protocol was probably an error and the other thing that and the other reason why you have to be weary of of dogecoin amongst many other things is that uh, when he created the the dogecoin protocol he just basically walked away from it he never thought of it as a long-term project uh, maybe if he did think of that as a long-term project and he tried to improve the code or have something to offer um, cryptocurrencies through different protocol um, creations and mechanisms. Maybe Dogecoin could be a long-term thing. And that is basically what I just said. The inflation, I think he, the person who created Dogecoin may have messed up. And the um, walking away from the project, which he made it as a joke. So it's not like he walked away from his, his, his experiment that he thought was going to change the world. He walked away because he was done with it. He, he just ha 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 he made it um but if he didn't do those things then yeah maybe dogecoin could have been a long-term project which that is that that is exactly why litecoin is a litecoin pro uh, a long-term project is because um charlie mimicked bitcoin in many ways proof of work uh uses a different um mining algorithm uses script instead of a uh, sha 256 but he did limit the supply four times the amount of um, Bitcoin. 84 million Litecoin will exist. And he stuck with the project and does different things. Like he just introduced MWeb fungibility on the Litecoin protocol. I don't know when it's going to be implemented or if it's already implemented. But, but what I'm saying is the protocol of Litecoin is active and there are different like side chains lightning and there's th different things happening on um litecoin like many other cryptocurrencies with dogecoin it's it's abandoned it's adorable it has a great meme but it's abandoned so can it really do the things it needs to do in order to become the best money that it can be i don't i don't think so because no one is working on the code no one is upgrading the necessary things that need to be upgraded. Was it made perfectly? Probably not. I'm sure there's different things like the inflation schedule that's that's not perfect. Now that doesn't mean once you create a coin you just constantly tinker with it. Um, there's something nice about Dogecoin. It's that that it, the nice thing about Dogecoin is that it has been abandoned. Um, so you know what you see is what you get. And it's left, it's just left to be tinkered with and played with by the users, but the code isn't gonna change. So did he create the perfect code? Probably not. Um, but Bitcoin is, so when you have Bitcoin, which is programmable money, since it's programmable money, it can get stronger through different use cases and through different applications. And that is all happening in Bitcoin and certain different alts. Like I'll admit Ethereum is trying to do that a lot. So when you have programmable money, they're trying to 
implement different applications for those coins and what you have right now in Dogecoin is nothing. It's not trying to solve anything. It's just sitting there. So do I see it as a long-term hold? I do not. So right now, personally, I would get out of Dogecoin and I would go into something, probably Bitcoin, maybe if you like something else, go into that. But that's all I have for today. I kind of jumped around from subject to subject, but um, let's recap. Stack those sats, try to ape in the Bitcoin. We know Bitcoin, predicted by the standard stock to flow model is gonna be $100,000 August of 2021. What a great opportunity you have right now because there was just a large correction. Uh, then I talked about Bitcoin ETFs, how that's gonna be an amazing thing with a new flood of money. And then finally I talked about Dogecoin, Dogecoin, and the need to possibly take the profits off and get into Bitcoin because Bitcoin will be the long-term play and Dogecoin, unfortunately, in my opinion, was just a short-term pump and probably a dump. I've got to go pick up my brother at the airport, so time for another video. Um, <clears throat> So what do I want to talk about today? I want to talk about something uh, maybe a little risky. And At the stop sign, turn right onto Jaycox Road. All right, so I want to talk about today um, is maybe a little risky and a little uh, stupid, but I don't have a ton of Bitcoin. I want more Bitcoin. And this probably doesn't work out all the time, let's just be honest. But what I'm currently doing is speculating highly on a coin, and it's pumping right now. I'm not gonna lie, guys, it's it's pumping pretty well right now. I have I'm not gonna I'm not gonna talk about what coin. <clears throat> um do your own research and uh, it's pumping right now and for me the only long time the only long term plays I have are Bitcoin absolutely Litecoin and maybe something which I don't have maybe something that deals with smart um, smart contracts which I know Bitcoin and Litecoin are technically able to do, but as, as of right now, that is not their bread and butter. Um, that would be like Ethereum and Polkadot and Cardano, things like that. <clears throat> but right now, I am in the phase of trying to accumulate my Bitcoin and my Litecoin bags. I want those bags before I move on. I'm not gonna deal with multiple bags, you know, trying to trying to crew all these bags at a different time. I'm not gonna do that. I have my Bitcoin bag and I'm work and I'm working on a certain number for my Litecoin bag. And I, I do the dollar cost averaging, of course I do that. You know, extra money that comes my way I, I put towards Bitcoin, Litecoin, and that's how I'm doing. It's pretty slow for me. Okay, I don't have a lot of extra income right now. So it's a tad slow for me. So I'm doing something that may be silly. I, I am speculating on a coin, and it's totally pumping right now. It's doing awesome. So what I plan on doing is that every time it does like a... I think this coin is going to 100x and um, uh, 50x. And every time it does like a 2 or a 5x, I'm going to take a little profit off the table and turn that in to Bitcoin and Litecoin. Um, is it risky? Absolutely, because the smart play, the responsible play, would probably be um, just to put your money directly into the coins you want, play no games. Um, so what I'm doing is speculative, absolutely, and it can absolutely, I can absolutely... At the next stop sign, turn left. So I know that going in, I can absolutely get wrecked. Uh, so what I'm going to do is every time it pumps a little bit, I'm going to take a little profit off the table, which uh, CryptoLard talks about, and I'm simply going to 
transfer some of that money into Bitcoin and Litecoin so that I can one day have the bag I need. My end play, my absolute end play, would be to have my Bitcoin and my Litecoin bag and any other bag I want. Have At the stop sign, turn left onto Bainbridge Road. Bitcoin position, unless I really want to, to change my life, but what I'm doing this for is to pay off my mortgage early, and if that can be 0.1 Bitcoin, or one, that's basically my strategy, is to get these bags, and once they're strong enough to pay off my mortgage, I definitely don't want to liquidate at all, no, heck no, because like I said in the other video, this stuff can go to a million dollars. So I only want to liquidate certainly less than half when my time is right to pay off my mortgage. Um, but I'm always adding to my balance. Always. In one mile, turn left onto Chestnut Ridge Road. my amounts until we can change my life. Now, I know there's other strategies, but this is the strategy that I think works for me, and I think it'll work for a lot of people, because if you're playing, like, only altcoin games, where you've got, like, 20 alts, and you're in and you're out, and you've got to keep track of all these different coins, and you're comparing them against to the Bitcoin, and let's be honest, 95% of altcoins over a year trajectory are not going to keep up with Bitcoin. They'll get pumps, but they don't. At the next stop sign, turn left. you got to simplify your approach. Take profits. And when I say take profits, I don't really mean take profits in the dollar. I mean take profits in Bitcoin. So everybody knows those exchanges where you can instantly transfer whatever altcoin, shitcoin, whatever coin you, you have, and get it on to Bitcoin, and then get that Bitcoin immediately off get into a wallet, a hardware wallet, or a wallet that you trust. At the stop sign, turn left onto Chestnut Ridge Road. 